Hey, good evening. It's, it's April 5th. Thanks so much for being here today. This morning we talked about the worldview concept of are we being dominated by a worldview that is fueled by anger or a worldview that is fueled by hope? And I want to get more specific about what hope looks like for us so we can have some real specific things. So I think sometimes some of the words that we hear a lot, like hope, faith, those kinds of things, we don't have a specific biblical concept definition tied to them. So they don't encourage us, except unless we hear them in some kind of a poetic or musical context. But God intends for us to put them into practice every day. That's why he put so much emphasis on them in the Psalms. It's Psalms stay with us, and hope is to stay with us. So I'm gonna look at Psalm 33, at the end of that Psalm, and give us some context of biblical hope, what it really means in specific language. So verse 16, no king is saved by the size of his army. No warrior escapes by his great strength. A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. Despite all its great strength, it cannot save. Now what David is not saying here is if you're going to go to war, get rid of your armies, get rid of your horses, get rid of your chariots and all those kinds of things. What he's saying is those things, as appropriate as they are, are not your hope. And we, when we depend solely upon the great strength of the horse, the strength of the army, the number of people I have, if I think that's what makes me safe, that's what this, these verses 16 and 17 are warning us against. Rather, the psalmist is pointing us to the idea that we are, God is constantly aware of you and me. We may not get that. We may not sense that. But just because you don't sense it doesn't mean it's not real. You are not alone. Read Psalm 121. God never slumbers or sleeps. He's always there. Psalm 33, they put it this way. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love, his hesed love that doesn't walk away. God is always seeing you. Now hang on to that for a second. That means that God never, never misses out on what your struggles are. He's there with you. He sees it. The eyes of the Lord are always on those who fear him. We feel like we have to let God know I have a problem. Well, yes, we come to him, but we come to him with the knowledge that he knows what we're struggling with. The eyes of the Lord, I'll read it again. The eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, on those whose hope is in his unfailing love to deliver them from death and keep them alive in famine. See, God isn't missing from the picture. No matter how desperate it seems, and here the concern about death and famine, those are pretty desperate times, God is there. Then we read about waiting in God. And that's the title of this thumbnail of our, of our talk tonight, the video. We wait and hope for the Lord. This idea of waiting is very closely, tightly connected to the fruit of the spirit of patience. Because patience is not passive, and we've talked about this a number of times before. Patience is not passive. Patience is aggressively believing that God is with me. It's waiting in expectation for God to care for me, not some vain hope but certainty that God is going to care for me. We wait and hope for the Lord. He is our help. He is our shield. Yes, you have shields on the army and you need to use them, but God is your shield. He's the shield of faith that Ephesians talk to us, talks to us about. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. Not in the size of the army, not in the size of our accomplishments, not all the things that we get done, not all the provisions we make, but rather our hearts are rejoicing in Him. We wait and hope for Him. We know it's a certainty He's going to be with us. So then the psalm ends this way, what we're looking at tonight. 
May your unfailing love, God's Hesed love, that special love of God, may your unfailing love be with us, O Lord, even as we put our hope in you. See, hope now is something that is specific. It's tied to the promises of God. It's his purpose to care for us. He's committed it to us. He committed the life of his son to care for us. So we're being urged here not to worry that my sight, my, my situation is lost before God. It's not. He is there with us, calling us to put our hope in him, to be patient. By being aggressive, I do the things that he's called me to do. Not to worry, not to give in to fear, not to be overwhelmed with the size of the enemy that we face. But to understand that God is committed to us. So I wait and hope, not in some, oh Lord, please help me, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but hope that God is bringing about his good, even in my trials, even in my mess, even in my hurt. God is working in me, both to do and according to his, do and to will according to his good pleasure, as we read in Philippians. So that's the hope I will leave you with tonight. Trust in God. You see, now anger comes in when I don't have a clear picture of what God wants. When I don't have a clear picture that I have a good reason to hope. Now I have something positive. Instead of being frustrated and worried and angry, I know that God is with me. Because my hope is secure. Because Jesus, as we just celebrated yesterday, died so that it would be secure. And that's the thought for this night. Again, love your comments and feedback that you're giving. Please continue to do that. Hit that subscribe button, and when you do, hit the turn on the post notifications. These videos will come to you automatically. Again, pray for me. I'm praying for you, but I need, I need your prayers because I want to be able to do what God wants me to do in terms of caring for you. And it means so much to interact with you in this way in these videos. If you have a great night, rest well this night in the hope of your Savior. So, Lord willing, we'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye.